everyone, it's Chrissy again with part two of the Return to Intimacy, a part of the Return and Reunion curriculum to be um, done aboard ships. So we just finished talking about open communication and using open-ended questions when you want to elicit conversation or begin to feel a little bit more connected to a significant other that you've been separated from. So the other thing too is we want to start thinking about how we can balance our time. And we put on here quality time versus quantity time. And we also want to think about that we are regularly getting alone time, family time. If we have, uh, this could be with our extended family or this could be time that our um, nuclear family spends together, our significant other and our children spend together. And that we also are spending time just as a couple. Now, time is different for different people. Now, if you have ever had the opportunity to read this book, um, The Five Love Languages, this is a book that our offices recommend for um, building and understanding couples communication. And I think the chaplains uh, like this book as well too. Um, so there are several different ways that people understand, receive, and give love and affection and they're different for each person. So kind of understanding what one person receives as love and one, what person gives as love. So as an example, me and my significant other, my spouse, I actually do like spending time outside of the house, um, having deeper conversation, um, spending time doing tasks together. And my spouse actually has cards that he received that he has kept since he was eight years old. Um, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm like, why, why buy money on a card? It just ends up in the recycle bin later. Um, so when we were first dating and we were first in a relationship, we sometimes had some miscommunication between what I would show as a sign of love and a sign of affection, and he was not necessarily receiving it because that was not his way of receiving love and affection. So this is a good way to kind of understand where you are in that process. There's an assessment in the back that you can send to your significant other. So reach out to us for that. There's some resources we can put you in contact with if you want to understand that. But everyone in general, whether you receive or give love in a um, in the context of quality time, everyone should be spending regular time by themselves, regular time as a family, and regular time as a couple. Now, I would say I didn't get comfortable spending time by myself um, until I was much older. Um, when I was a young spouse, I felt like I needed to not do the things that I loved to do. I wouldn't go to the movies I wanted to. I didn't go to the restaurants that I, that I loved, that I spent time with, with my significant other. And as I grew and as time progressed, I realized that I was kind of discounting my own feelings and wasn't necessarily um, just wasn't confident enough to experience that on my own but once I had the confidence to do that I really felt more whole as a person so I've actually even gone on vacation by myself and that's okay I can I can enjoy my time at a restaurant and just enjoy the peace and quiet of being in a public space without feeling like I need to talk and that's good for me. So think too that you might actually need that time to yourself. It's just a good idea to communicate that beforehand so your need for alone time doesn't translate to I don't enjoy being with my family, okay? So even when right now all of us are stuck in our homes, if you need to quarantine in your home or you have been asked to uh, spend your palm period at home, or your vacation or your leave, um, realize to balance that family time, alone time, and couple time within your home, okay? So that means that sometimes maybe after the children are asleep, you can. it's okay to say, hey, I'm just gonna take this hour and go read by myself in this room and I'm gonna be happy to see you in a little while, but I do need that time to kind of decompress, take some deep breaths, and be in my own space. And just as long as you communicate that and you make a time later to reconnect, I think that this will work, all right? So consider that as, as being very important, very important for every, for every individual, all right? Now the next thing that I wanna talk about is that change is very constant. That's the only constant in life is change. And it can be very difficult to come home and see a lot of things that are different. 
And there will be much more that's different about coming home with this current global pandemic. So just get ready. <laughs> um, we're making it. Um, things are things. Hopefully, will uh, will you know start to be more normal at some point. But um, get ready for things to not be what they used to be. Okay. Um, think about some of the ways that change can be positive. Okay, I actually have a lot of mom guilt because I spend a lot of time working and I miss out on some of my children's activities and me being at home has allowed me for time to be available for some of their activities. I also know more about what my children are learning in school because I am their homeschool teacher. Um, so think too about some of the ways that change might be a little bit different. Maybe you've always wanted to learn how to cook some of your grandmother's recipes but you just never had the time or never really um, gave yourself the opportunity, maybe this is a time to pick that up. You thought, hey, I, I've always wanted to learn how to play the guitar, and maybe now I can use some of that money from this uh, situation and, and work on, that, on that, um, that hobby that I haven't had time to do. Maybe this means that we have more time as a couple to um, catch up on some of our, you know, tidying, um, organizing, or maybe some home improvements. Think about that instead of the things, focusing only on the things you cannot do because that will just make you have a hard time. <laughs> Think more about positive things you can do. How can you accept this change and what support is available to you? Of course, you know you can reach out to Fleet and Family, um, but when we're talking more about how relationships might have changed, sometimes spouses will have developed new skills and they will have gone outside of the home and developed new relationships or um, new skills. And this can be kind of intimidating for someone who was in a relationship before and has, um, has been able to leave due, a, due to a deployment. So how can I accept this change that my spouse is much more self-reliant post-deployment than pre-deployment? Um, can I, am I comfortable with that? And if the answer is no, Let's work on some positive steps to accepting that change. Um, I also usually take a moment when I'm talking about change to just say that there are times when the home has been created in a certain way that functions for a couple or functions for one person and doesn't function for me as my own single entity. So the example that I use is I talk about the bathroom counter. So when I would, even when my spouse would go away for a short TDY or just a, a long training, I would actually go through a kind of a routine when he left. I would go and stop the grandfather clocks because I didn't want to have to worry about winding them. Um, I would change a few things around the kitchen to suit my needs. And the bathroom counter was where I kind of took over a little bit. Um, my spouse likes to put things where you stand at a station, you have your shaving cream, you got your toothbrush, you got your toothpaste over here, the towel's right here within reach. I want to stand here and I want to be able to get myself ready. Um, I actually think it's a little cluttered, but that's a, that's a totally different situation. So I would go through this um, than what I'm talking about right now. So I would go through this routine where I would just go take a box, put all of those items that belong to him in the box and put the box under the sink. And if I didn't have the conversation, which I didn't when we first were together, um, it looked like I was trying to rid evidence of him and take over the space that belonged to him. But really, here's why I had to do that. I had to change my environment to suit my needs at the moment. If I woke up every morning and saw items of yours that were sitting and collecting dust, instead of being in a productive mode, instead of being able to wake up, take care of children, go to work, accomplish the things I needed to accomplish within the day, I would wake up, see your items there, watch dust collecting on them, and it would bring me down. It would remind me of how much longer time needed to pass before we could be together again, and I couldn't get myself in the headspace that I needed to be productive. So consider that your spouse and your significant other might have needed to change things in the home to suit their needs at that time. And the best way is to communicate that, but they might not necessarily understand that they needed to do that to be in the correct headspace. So start facilitating those conversations and realize that change is change. We can either accept it, we can go back to the way things are, or we can figure out a way to move forward together collaboratively. All right, I'll see you for the next one.